Hi there, and welcome to another video here from the CMON Expo 2017. And we are at the end of the second day of the Expo, so it's Saturday night. There's actually one more full day of the Expo left, but uh, Marty and I have gotten to the point where we have seen a lot of the games that are out there on the floor, so we just couldn't wait to to tell someone about what we've been seeing. So we decided to hook up uh, a couple of my cameras here and uh, record an impromptu little video talking about what we've seen so far and what has caught our eye and why. So you're telling me there's a camera here mm -hmm. and then there's a camera there. So there is. Okay. Huh. You just want to get all techy and everything, aren't you? It is a little bit of an experiment, yes. So, okay. Yeah. Well, I think we, if we work hard enough, we can make people nauseous. Like, like there, there, that, yeah, there, uh, there, 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 and there. Marty, you, you realize every time that you do that, it's incredibly expensive. Anyway, yes. So, what you've made a list here of the games, which is really helpful. So, what's the very first game or experience at Simon Expo that's on your list? Uh, well, we got to sit down and play. We got to play a lot of different games, and um, the thing about this expo is playing games that are in, still in development. Yeah. Uh, maybe not prototype, maybe on prototype, but like they're doing some final tweaks and everything uh, before they release, and these games may be end of this year, maybe even next year. That's true. And one of the first games that we actually got to try that was on the new side was uh, Richard the Lionheart. Yes. Because yes. you could play as a Maid Marian, Little John, mm -hmm. and uh, some of the locations on the map, like Sherwood, mm -hmm. Nottingham. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I did find it very curious there was no actual Robin Hood in the game that I saw. There was Little John, and there was a Sheriff of Nottingham, but they, it seemed like they purposefully tried to set it in that setting, but leave that specific character out to not muddy up what they were trying to do with the game. Right, right. Um, so this was like a team-based game, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you and I were on uh, one team playing against two other people. We, yes, we were on the red side of the resistance with Little John and Maid Marian fighting against the other team, which was the sheriff and the sheriff's assistant. Yes, well, whatever that name of that person was. The thing was, was each of us as teams had different goals. Yeah, that was interesting. Uh -huh. We were trying to get Richard home. Mm-hmm. And they were trying to deplete our coffers. Yes. They were trying to run the resistance out of money, essentially. Yes. Yep. And we were trying to just get our heroic King Richard back to the land so he could kick out Prince John and every put everything right again. And while that sounds like it may be like an Ameritrash game, it's a Euro game. Uh, yes. Very much so, very right? Much, very much. There's a lot of resource management. We're collecting resources. And mm -hmm. it had the worker placement feel to where you were on a map, and when you moved to a map, each location you could have... You could spend resources or do things uh, based on location you went, kind of like a worker placement, but you weren't physically putting workers out on the board. I got much more of a hand management vibe where the workers you placed were just there to get you more cards almost as an order and change your resources. But I got much more of a hand management, resource management than worker placement vibe when I played it. Right. And after we after we played the game, we, we only, by the way, uh, with all the demos that we played, we only played like half a game yes. uh, because uh, they had to get people in and out. So we only played like a... just half of the game. Uh, the, the odd thing I found about this was that well, each of us also had a secret objective. And at the end, uh, you it could possibly get you more victory points. And there was one sole winner at the end. So you and I were playing together. But then at the end, it was like we resolved the victory points, but there was like one victor overall. And you made a good comparison to another game that's like that. Yes, it reminded me a little bit of Marvel Legendary, where everybody's fighting on one team, but then whoever amasses the most victory points is actually the winner. Right. And, it, and just like Marvel Legendary, it didn't seem like it really was necessary in this game. It didn't, didn't seem like it would need it. Right. And wasn't there a game that you were talking about that kind of reminded you a little bit of that too? Yes. Instead of winner, because you're uh, working together... Uh, for your Someone colony. as a team for your colony, but uh -huh. remember, everybody has a secret objective. Mm -hmm. And at the end, even though your team may win, um, if you achieve your, your objective, you could also win that way too. So yeah. it, it kind of had that feel. Uh, I, the thing was, with the, with this game, there was some graphic design in the board that was kind of confusing to it, us. It was, there was some movement of, of icons and pieces on the board. Like one team was trying to move one direction with a, a mini and another team was trying to move another. It was hard to keep track of. But it was the same. The tracks were side by side. Yes. And one was going, actually there were four tracks. That's right. And it was almost like you know a couple would go this way and a few would go this way, but it was almost randomized which tracks were going which direction. Right. Yeah, it was definitely a work in progress. And what was really cool with this amount of Expo is you have a lot of people uh, in the graphic design, the, des the designers here, mm -hmm. getting feedback. Yeah. And we talked quite at length 
gave uh, him really good notes with with, with some uh, some of the people who were interested in our thoughts, and he took down a lot of notes and and are thinking about changing the graphic design of the board based on the note, on the ideas we gave him. All kidding aside, it is it was amazing to be playing the game and talking amongst ourselves with the little glitches and stuff that we saw. And yeah, have a actual CMON representative walk up to us with a notepad and ask us for constructive criticism and critique on the game and start writing down the things people were saying. And I would be surprised if the things that the people at the table mentioned are not reflected in the final version of this game because they seem to be taking that incredibly seriously. Right, and so if they don't take our ideas and, and put them on the board, I would be really upset. <laughs> Disappointed. Another game we got to play, Dojo. Why am I? This is your show. Why aren't you going through the list? You should be moderating. Because I'm tricking you into doing the hard work for me. <laughs> you mean like all the editing, like from here to <laughs> here? I'm sorry, we won't do that again. My bad. <laughs> Dojo Kun. Dojo Kun. Now, this is a game that I was very, very interested in when I saw it on the table because it is a fighting game. And every fighting game I've seen to date has always been a card driven, like deck building type of game, like, like Yomi. And um, did you ever play uh, the Street Fighter card game? It was a CCG? No, that was just a hair before my time, I think, before I got it. It's into... coming out again this, uh, is this it, summer. Is it based on the Versus system? No. Is it? The, the ultimate fighter system. Oh, I'm not familiar with that one. UFS. Oh. U Universal. Universal fighter system that came out in the mid-2000s. Anyway, we got off track. But oh. anyway, the, there's a Street Fighter game coming out again that's based on an old system. It's going to be a CCG. Interesting. Anyway. It's going to be a CCG? I believe so. Oh, that's a hard sell. It is. It is. Okay. Dojo Kun! Dojo Kun is a fighting game, but most fighting games... We have one-on-one, -on -one, you know, kung fu fighting experience. It's usually card-driven. Everybody was kung fu fighting. Yeah. So this game, however, was a worker placement Euro-style game. Yes. That was split yeah. into two. Euro game. You would think, again, oh, this is going to be an Ameritrash yeah. game. Yeah, uh -huh. you walk into nope. it. Except there were dice. There were dice, yes. And this game, the part I think we both want to talk about about it, it was split into two halves. You had your worker placement side. Which where was you were, three rounds. Which was three rounds of like gaining equipment to train, gaining new fighters to train in your dojo, giving them new um, abilities and experiences, and leveling up their kicks, their blocks, their punches, and their uh, grapples and everything. Because there was four different ways your fighter moves your fighter could yes. do. Yes, and your sensei was one of the workers, and there were certain places on the board they could go. Uh-huh. Each of your fighters also had a worker coin. Yes. And a, you could add more workers by getting more fighters. Mm -hmm. So that very typical worker placement style mechanic. Yeah. And it worked. It, it took a few moments to kind of figure out what we were doing. But once we realized, oh, we're, we're adding more players. We're adding a larger roster to our dojo. We're improving these, these fighters and giving them new moves. Okay. Because that just prepped us for the second half of the game, which was this tournament where they actually had the brackets on the board. And yep. you'd put each player's coin on those brackets and then you would have this big tournament where they all fight till there's one winner and that half of the game is something i think that you want to talk about you would think that uh, with this game the whole thing was building up your fighters going into a tournament and fighting yeah and it was like all right I, we're building a little bit of an engine we're upgrading our fighters we're increasing now, more dice that we're we going to use we're yeah. Now, oh yeah we didn't talk about that oh, so yeah. it's, it's based oh. on the as you level up your abilities like a grapple punch kick and there was one blocks. other blocks. There's dice that you, you're adding dice to your dice pool that you'll use in the fight. Yes, yes. Yeah. So you're accumulating all of these you know, dice that you're going to be able to throw at your opponent. Okay. Right. And then the tournament starts. Tournament starts and have a cool seating system mm -hmm. where during the course of the game, you actually could place a worker to get to pick who you fight against, mm -hmm. which is kind of cool. Mm -hmm. So you in a four-player tournament, which is what we had, mm -hmm. you had a bracket set of a, a four-player bracket. Those seedings were made, mm -hmm. and then you pull all your dice together. So say if it was uh, you against I, mm -hmm. we pull our dice together for a particular fighter, roll the dice, mm -hmm. and then there was this resolution mechanic that was a head-scratcher. <sighs> yes, there was this serpentine track of eight different spaces on the board representing the both fighters' blocks, punches, kicks, and grapples. So you had your four different sections for each fighter, making eight total sections. And each of those sections was split up almost like a ruled piece of paper into subsections, like zero to 10. And then you had a little bit of, a little marker in each one of those eight sections that would mark how many blocks, 
punches, grapples, and kicks each player would accumulate from their dice roll, and you would set them on the serpentine marker, and then one person's grapples would block the kicks, and the remaining kicks would block the punches, and the remaining... <laughs> it's confusing. It would actually block the blocks. Yes. It and then the remaining blocks would block, block the punches. Is that what it was? Okay. And then... The other side did the exact same thing, and then the the other player had the same exact resolution. Yeah, right. Then when we got to the end, whoever had, had the highest number of punches left, left, yeah, won that fight. And so I could see what they were going for and what they were trying yes. to do. But my goodness, was that fiddly? Yeah, and it, it was, and it just the the pace of the game just came to a crawl yes. because if you weren't in the fight, they had this mechanic where I, where you could. Bet. Which sounded it, neat. With only the black gi or the white gi would win. Yeah. Well, I thought it was cool. I thought, oh, bet. Am I going to get to wager some of my resources? Nope. You just basically uh, guess who's going to win. And then if you guessed right, you get a victory point. Yeah. Yeah. And that was, yeah, when we did the betting and the first uh, combat was resolved and the, the winner who, you know, the people who bet right were like, oh, what do we win? It's like, you get a victory point. And what else? No, that's it. Yeah, that was a little bit of a letdown right. as well. And it just so happened in the tournament that we played, uh, I sent two fighters to the fight. Mm -hmm. I think everybody sent two fighters to the fight. Yes. Yeah. Two of us lost in the first round, mm -hmm. and then you and the other opponent basically carried on towards the championship, and the other two of us are just sitting there twiddling our thumbs. Yeah, and because of the complex resolution to the combat, you know, it took several more minutes each time to resolve that than could have been necessary if it was a little more streamlined. So that was a few extra minutes each round of combat that you and the other player that were out were just sitting there waiting. Again, I think it's one of those games that has a really cool theme. I can't think of any other Euro. And once I say that, somebody's going to put in the comments down below, you forgot these six or seven, you idiot. <laughs> they may say it with a southern accent. I, I don't know. That's okay. When you're but complaining anyway. about the viewers, I'm just going to put your Twitter handle up right there. <laughs> but anyway, uh, you haven't seen a lot of games. <laughs> Euro <Smooth>. games. <laughs> ba based on this theme. So yeah. I, I think it's really cool. I don't know how far it is in the design. I think if they change some of the fighting stuff, it actually could be pretty neat. Yes. Yeah, it did look like it was a pre-press production. It, it wasn't like a one-off print. It, it was not. It looked like it was like color so laser. So it's probably printer. full. Yeah, it's probably pretty far into its development. Yeah. But I'm hoping, hoping against hope, that there's wiggle room for them to modify that a little bit. Because I saw it like 75%, 80% like potential there. It was so close to being awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So that's Richard the Lionheart and Dojo Kun. Mm -hmm. Okay. So two of the half dozen or so games that we, we have experienced here. Yep. We'll be back in another video real soon with two more of the games that we got to focus on here at CMON. In the meantime, take care and we'll talk to you again soon. Yes, it was. And if I had just not forgotten what it was, I would say what that is. Oh, A Dead of Winter. I remember another game, um, <laughs> Marvel Legendary. There's another game um, other than um, Yomi. What's the other? Dead of Winter. I don't know. I can't remember. There's, there's... Marvel Legendary. <laughs> Hi, this is me from slightly ahead in the future. If I just said in this intro that Marty and I were going to talk about every game that we saw at the expo here in this video, I lied to you. We're going to talk about two of them, and then, because that's going to allow us to go into a little more detail, and then we'll go into more of the games in other videos. Ah, we have the luxury of time travel at our disposal.